Hello YouTube! Right, technical difficulties mean we are kind of doing this on the fly right now, but we are going to look at all of the blue M15 cards and give you a kind of like overview of what we think is going to be good picks for pre-release. So if you go to Gatherer, put on to M15 and then put them into colour order, they're going to go alphabetical on their own, hit the blues where it's on page two I think we're starting with, and then we're just going to go through all of them from there. Okay then guys. Over to you, Threads, with the first card. So are we going to kick off with Aeronaut Tinkerer? Yay! This is a three-mana human artificial creature, 2-3. Aeronaut Tinkerer has flying as long as you control an artifact. Nice little ability, blue lights to interact with artifacts. Three mana for a 2-3 is already not bad. Not bad ability. And the fact that it gets an amazing ability as strong as flying is good. The only drawback, of course, is you've got to have another artifact. Um, we'll get onto the artifacts later on and we'll see uh, if there are any really, really powerful artifacts. I know for a fact there's one that a lot of people are going to want to get their hands on, but shh, that's later on. That's for another video. But uh, yeah, good creature. Not a bad creature. Cool. Next up we've got Ether Sprouts, which is a 5 drop double blue instant. For each attacking creature, its owner puts it onto the top of his or her library. Okay, for each attacking creature, its owner puts it on top of his or her library. So you're, you're basically removing all of your opponent's creatures then. Yeah. Or, another side to this is, you block everything your opponent's got, then you play it... No, because it's attacking creatures. Yeah, okay, so it's removal for all the attacking creatures and it puts your opponent onto the back foot where they're going to be drawing creatures for ages. If they're playing stuff that's a lot of spells, could be quite useful. I think it's got its place there for a five mana double drop. Blue. It's kind of, pricey. like you say, it's kind of pseudo mass removal in blue. Blue's not really had it before. It's fun. Yeah, it will mess your, your opponent's game plan up, yeah. especially if they're deck fixing. Okay. So here we have Amphin Path Mage. This is a 4 mana 3 2 Salamander Wizard creature. You don't say that very often, do you? Salamander wizard uh, creature. Interesting combination. For two and one blue, target creature can't be blocked this turn. So, you get a 3 2 creature for four mana, which is already okay. Not great, but it's okay. However, for three mana, you can make one of your creatures unblockable, including itself, of course. So, it's almost like a 3 2 unblockable creature. Almost. But also good for helping your big bombs later on break through. Yeah, I think this is one of the cards that could be quite important to you on the pre-release, but when you get into standard, you're going to want to look for something that's a bit more effective. Uh, Rogue's Passage possibly would do this job a lot better if that's what you're looking to do. But yeah, pre-release, I think this could be could be a killer, actually. Yeah. Turn 4, you've dropped it, and then turn 5, turn 6, you bring out your fatty, and then you trample with it. Could be quite a useful card there, I think. Yeah. Right, next up is a classic. This is Council, a 3-drop double blue instant counter-target spell. It's a classic common white card. There's stuff that does this thing better, um, but the main thing is it's target spell. It's not creature or aura or enchantment or anything like that. Whatever your opponent plays, no matter what card it is, whether it's a planeswalker, whether it's a creature, whether it's an instant itself, it doesn't matter. You are going to cancel that card. Um, so yeah, that's where its strength comes from, and that's where its kind of longevity, longevity comes from, because this card has been played a lot, yeah. a lot. So yeah, it's a mainstay for pre-releases in blue. You could probably find something more effective in standard, but I would go for it if I was playing blue. Yeah. Good, good spell. It's an okay spell. All right, on to the next page. So, first here on this page we have Chasm Skulker. This is a 3 mana squid horror. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Chasm Skulker. When Chasm Skulker dies, put X11 one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk onto the battlefield, where X is the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on Chasm Skulker. Quite frankly, I am a fan of this guy as soon as I read it. For a start, squid horror. Much like the Salamander Wizard before, Squid Horror. I think I'm playing Just Blue on Saturday. I'm going to have a Salamander Wizard and a Squid Horror. Yeah. That and quite frankly, happy. plus one, plus one, countless for drawing cards. Well, we all know Blue draws cards well. 
So you get a nice big creature. Three mana for our 1-1 one, one doesn't sound great at first, but as soon as you put that first plus one plus one counter on him, ooh, pretty tasty, 2-2, two, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And really efficient, because when he dies, you get lots of nice little squid tokens. If your opponent's playing blue, they can't block him. Great. I like this guy. I play him. And maybe not in this, but there will be other places in standard which will give your, you the, the chance to turn your opponent's land into islands yep. and things like that. So I think this is going to standard. I think we're going to get squid decks. I'm making a squid deck. I'm, put, I'm, I'm saying this now. I'm going to make a squid deck. You're going to have a video in a couple of months' time of me showing off my squid deck. And I don't play blue. So it's going to be interesting. It'll be fun. Right, next up we have Chief Engineer. We're not talking about Mars O'Brien here. This is a two drop, one blue, creature, Vulcan Artificer. Right, this is a two drop for a one three creature. And artifacts, spells you cast have Convoke. Now, Convoke is the new ability or the, the remade ability for this set, which means that you can tap a creature for either colourless mana or the colour of it. So if it's a blue creature, you tap it, you can either have colourless or you can have blue mana from it. That means your artifacts are mainly going to be colourless anyway. So you can tap any creatures you want and you're going to be able to play those artifacts basically free. One nice tip that Thrace introduced us to in the white video is you, you block with your creatures doesn't mean they tap. While they're blocked, you can then tap them for the combo ability. So if you've got some kind of flash ability, you can then use that as well to get your artifacts out yeah very interesting i can see this guy getting a lot of play both limited and standard yeah i think some constructed decks will make use of it uh, it might be a little bit slow for robots in particular or uh, affinity as some people call it still but uh, but we'll see i think he, he could still see play in some artifact decks and actually there is a pretty beefy uh, artifact later on in this set which again come to in the next video bear it in mind though yeah, um, I think if you pull this guy, you're going to be sitting on money here. I think this guy is going to be worth Useful. worth a bit of money. Okay. So here we have Chrono Stutter. Six mana instant. Put target creature into its owner's library, second from the top. It's a fun spell. But at six mana, six mana is too much. When you can get spells as efficient as, say, unsummon, return target creature to it from the play to its opponent's hand for one six just to put it second from the top is not terribly useful I think it's like I say it's fun but it's not very strong yeah I don't know what they're getting at there must be something there must be something we haven't seen yet about this second from the top yeah okay um, I don't know something will come up with that but let us know if you hear of anything interesting with that then we have Coral Barrier, which is a 3-drop wall 1-3 with Defender. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one blue squid creature token with Island Walk onto the battlefield. Yeah. I like walls. I like Defenders. It's a 3-drop for a 1-3, so there's not brilliant balance there for the mana. But you also get a 1-1 one, one creature, which doesn't have this Defender yeah. restriction on it. Um, so 1 for a 1-1, one, one, you knock that off, you're paying 2 mana for a 1-3. That's your balance right there. Um, I like it. Ball squids, always fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Island Walk. So we'll, we'll hang on and we'll see if there's anything land orientated that's going to yeah. convert your, your opponent's lands. If it is, blue squid decks for the win. So next up we have Diffusion Sliver. This is a two mana creature, Sliver. 1-1. One, one. Whenever a Sliver creature you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, Counter spell or ability unless its controller pays two. Well now, this is a strong sliver. It helps protect your slivers from re removal spells early game. It's it's a good sliver. Just the, the fact it makes them almost immune to early game removal and makes it really difficult for your opponent to remove them in the mid game is a real win for slivers. It's, it stops their weak, because obviously oh, slivers are weak. If you kill lots of other slivers, they're weak. If you can't deal with the other slivers, they're really strong. And this helps make them unkillable. Makes it really hard to deal with them. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, think pre-release is going to see a slivers deck. 
if you hear of one, let us know. I'd like to see your Slithers deck that you've made from a pre-release because you're going to have to go for five colours. There's about one Slither in each colour, I think, so it's going to make life a lot difficult unless you've got the Mana Slither, unless they've reprinted that one somehow. But it looks like they've made up all new Slithers for this, yeah. this release. So it looks like it. I think it's just to kind of keep people's Slither ideas in mind and maybe not go too mad on it like they did last year. Right, so next up we have Dissipate. This is a classic. This is a three mana, two white, instant counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, this way exile it instead of putting it into its own graveyard. It can be very useful for things that could reverberate, come back on you, stuff like that. Um, yeah, nice little solid blue card. It's a, a functionally better version of Cancel. It's this exactly the same mana cost as Cancel, 1 and 2 blue, so it counters spells as well, but it also exiles them, so it's just better than Cancel Array. However, it is an uncommon, not a common, so you're less likely to get Dissipate in Sealed. That's the major, major difference between the two of them. So next up we have Divination. This is 3 mana, draw 2 cards. Sorcery Speed, uh, which... Some draw, a lot of draw stuff is, makes it a bit of a shame. However, three mana for two cards is really efficient. And again, works really well with the Chasm Skull that we saw before. You're paying three mana to give him plus two, plus two. And make two more squid if he dies. But you also get to, yeah, draw two cards. Drawing cards is always good. So blue does really efficiently. And Divination, is, is a, it's a pretty good spell. It's pretty useful. It's another mainstay. We're seeing a lot of mainstays in blue. Especially this next one, we've got Encrust which is a 3-drop double blue, enchantment aura, enchant artifact or creature, enchanted permanent, doesn't untap during its, un un during its controller's untap step and its activate abilities can't be activated. So you're locking down an opponent's uh, creature or artifact. Yeah. Good pseudo nice removal. Yeah, Good um, well. very useful in pre-release. It's a double blue drop, so you're going to have to really be um, committed to blue for it, but it's definitely worth having in your yeah. deck. I'm just going to disappear for a second and let Chris talk about the next one. So, next up we have Ensoul Artifact. Two mana enchantment aura, enchant artifact. Enchanted artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five five in addition to its other types. This is actually surprisingly powerful. Uh, so for two mana, you can make one of your really early artifact drops, should there be uh, any you've played. A 5-5, five five. so potentially, turn 2, you have a 5-5 five five creature. That could be really powerful, that could be game-changing and limited. And even in Constructed, could be useful as a way to force through a bit of extra damage with an artifact. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad. Making them a 5-5 five five is good. I would be playing this. Yeah. Plays off Tezzeret's old ability quite nicely. It just gives you a nice reminder of it. Yeah. Good blue spell. So, yeah, blue's looking very... They're all... Uh, white was looking very strong, but blue's definitely looking strong in this mm. now. We have got Frost Lynx, which is a three-drop, one, one, one blue. Elemental cap for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Yeah, three for a two with a tap-down ability. I like it. Um, it's not brilliant. But um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue with it. It's quite a nice little card. Definitely, um, kind of your your third drop range. Yeah, there. It's, it's a good filler nice. card for early game. Yeah, I like him. Uh, next we have Fugitive Wizard. One blue mana for our one one human wizard. No abilities. Perfect example of basic creature. One mana, one one. Does exactly what it says on the tin. No abilities. Maybe useful if there's effects that play off the fact that it is a wizard. We'll see how it goes. Mm. Definitely good filler. Right, then we have Glacial Crasher, which is a six drop double blue creature elemental 5-5 five five with trample, but it can't attack unless there is a mountain on the battlefield. So you're really going to have to splash in a bit of red for this card to work. Six drop for a 5-5 five five with trample, I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Even if you have to splash a bit of red. Oh no, you've got a splash a bit of red. I'm going to put a bit of direct damage in there. You're not really going to complain. Um, yeah, 
I like this card, and I think this could be quite a good winner for, for pre-release. 5-5, five, five, Trample, buffed up a little bit with a few enchantments. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's not a bad little guy. Uh, next up we have Hydro Surge. One blue, instant, target creature gets minus five, minus not ten to turn. I personally am not much of a fan of these effects because they, they do sort of nullify one attacker-ish. Uh, so they can be useful to, say, save one of your big blockers that you're going to kill off the creature but don't want your creature to die in return. can be useful for that, but it's just Bloom has a lot of other efficient ways that you can be printed to do it. For example, Unsummon. Things like that, things that return it to their hands so your opponent's got to cast it again or whatever. There are much more efficient effects than this, but it can be useful. Ish. Yeah, I think it's got its place. Have a play with it, see if you're comfortable. Because if if you're not comfortable, you're not gonna play it really, even yeah. if it's in your hand. But if you if you find it gets you out of a tricky spot, go for it. I mean no one's gonna judge you for playing it if if you play it in the right time and the right place. Could be quite a good card. Illusionary Angel, this is a three drop blue angel illusion for four with flying. And cast Illusory Angel only if you cast another spell this turn. This is a really good card. Um, we've seen illusions with a higher toughness attack. Yeah, before uh, in blue. Normally, they've kind of got a, a pretty bad ability with them. But because you've got to cast them with someone else, it's not really an, an issue. Especially it's a, another spell. So it doesn't have to be cast when you cast another creature. Uh, flying. A 4-4 four, four flyer for 3 is a really good cost. Even if you have to sack out, say you're carrying a Hydra Surge and you're just going to play it randomly. You've played another spell. Okay, it's cost you 4 to play that creature. I would still pay 4 for a 4-4 four, four with flyer. You know, uh, most people probably know how I feel about flyers in pre-releases and, and limited games. Go for flyers. Always. You've got to have them, even if you're not using them as attack, you've got them for defence. And a 4-4. Four, four. It's beautiful. So that's a really good blue card right there. So next up we have Into the Void. Four mana sorcery. Return up to two target creatures that are in his hand. Uh, he's still not bad. You get to return two creatures to your opponent's hand. Four mana is mm, high-ish. Not bad. The real downside of the card is the sorcery speed. And that makes me sad. Yeah. Bounce is always best at instant speed, but then I'll, most things are best at instant speed. Uh, I'm not completely sold on the card. It's okay as pseudo removal, um, but uh, you can splash other colours for proper removal. If but if you haven't got anything else, then yeah, yeah. you can you play it. If you need some removal in your hand or in your deck, go for it, but you're going to find other things that are going to do it better. Right, next up we have Invisibility, which is a double blue... Enchantment Aura, Enchant Creature, Enchant creature, creature, can't be blocked except by walls. This is amazing. It really is. I mean, it also means that they brought the, the walls are going to be more effective yeah. in it. So make sure you've got a wall in your defence, I think, if you come across someone with this. But uh, this is a really good card for, for a common. I think this is a really nice card. We were talking earlier about uh, the, the creature card that can make creatures unblockable. This is your more effective way of doing it. It's an enchantment. Um, there's other cards that get enchantments back now as well from your graveyard and things like that. I, yeah, I like this card. I seem to be seem to be putting all the good cards at the moment in blue. But um, not as good as what Thrace is going to get next. So here we have uh, the majority of people's favourite Planeswalker back again. Jace the Living Guild Pact. So if this latest incarnation of Jace, he costs four mana, two, and then double blue. Uh, that because he's uh, four, his loyalty, starting loyalty is of course four. Uh, his plus one loyalty ability, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your graveyard. Uh, so it's kind of like, um, it's a new form of deck fixing to a point. Look at the top two, and the one that you don't like you put in the, gra the graveyard, the one you want to draw, you've put back. Not bad, but it's not an actual draw ability, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, it's strange. They normally comment on where you put that other card. Yeah. So, well. yeah. His minus three ability, return another target non-land permanent to its own hand. That's quite good. That's quite efficient. You can bounce anything, of course, except lands. Um, it's not bad. Minus three is quite steep for it. Minus two might 
it's a bit more uh, more efficient ability, but it's not bad. Minus say each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library. You draw seven cards. Uh, alter abilities on placewalkers are always an awkward thing because they're very often really really good, but it's very very rarely that you'll get to a stage where you can do uh, your placewalkers ultimate. Although with Ajani's new ability, might uh, start getting closer than ever. But hmm. go back to white, see what I mean. I mean, he starts off with five loyalty there. Yeah. Oh, yes, he does. They've changed, yes. So you've only got to do three pluses, which is probably why the plus is a bit on the rubbish side. That gives your opponent three turns, then, to get in and attack you. Yeah. Uh, the real drawback is that it's not even that powerful um, an ultimate, because everybody does it. You're your opponent. However, you're the one that gets to draw seven cards. Yeah, your opponent has nothing in their hand then. Yeah, so it's it's good. It's good. It's just not the best ultimate ability we've seen, even for minus eight. Overall, I'm not overly impressed with Jason and Gilpact. Um, people are going to want him because he's a planeswalker and because he's Jace. Jace. But uh, there are much better planeswalkers in this set alone, let alone other sets. Yeah, I would say if you pull in, what you want to do is find someone gullible to either trade it with on the day or sell it to later. I don't see you making a standard blue deck not with Jace in mind this year round. Not really. No. I mean, we'll see, of course. And his plus one deck fixing is always good. Even if it's not the best version of deck fixing, it's still deck fixing. If you had a draw on that, I think that would be better because you're losing one card. I suppose I, you are getting that card back once you get to his, his ultimate ability. Because that card's going into the graveyard, you then shuffle your graveyard back into your deck. But, I don't know. I'm not sold on this Planeswalker. No. Not at all. No. Okay. Then we have Jace's Ingenuity, which is a 5-drop double blue, instant, draw three cards. A bit pricey, but you get three draws. We know what draw does in blue now. Um, by the time you get to, a, to five mana... Maybe if it had Convoke in it, or something like that, it would make it a bit more yeah. worthwhile, but at the moment, I... Th it, it's instant speed draw, which is why they've bumped it up to five. Instant speed draw is fun. It's good, it's pretty useful, it's just, like you say, five to... Five is quite steep. It's okay, mm. but it's not great. No. In my opinion. Yeah, if you've got it, maybe play it, see how you feel about it. But there's other things that do that job better. Oh. So here we have Jalira, Master Polymorphist. She's a four mana legendary creature, human wizard, 2 2. Pay two, one blue, tap her. Sacrifice another creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non legendary creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Pretty cool. Pretty useful. So you can turn a one one that you played at the start of the game. Even a token. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't say like yeah. a lot of cards do. So non token creature. One of our one one squids from earlier. Yeah. You can turn that one one squid into a uh, big fatty. I, get I can see this squid deck making already. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. And the creatures so the cards that you reveal don't go to the graveyard, they go on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah. So And you get to cast that creature that you reveal for free. So you could splash in some other colours or even not include the mana into your big fatties. You could. If you wanted to, you might you might have a bit of trouble there, but if you're if you're tight on your deck, it might work. So uh I like that card. Yeah. Not so not so sold. She's a bit of fun. She's a bit of fun. I I can't see it being terrifically game breaking. Unless you get yourself um, a lot of efficient creatures, which you can turn your early non-efficient creatures into them. I think it's it's good, it's fun, you've just got to have a lot of really good efficient creatures to make her work brilliantly. Yeah. So maybe more of a standard card. Make a standard deck. Yeah, you, you, you could try, yeah. If you've got a lot of stuff to fix your deck and you know that you've got a really good creature to draw, pretty good. Yeah, so maybe it could be useful with Jace's ability to a point. Cool. Right, next up we have got a Jurabi Merc Lurker, which is a 3-drop blue creature for 1-3. It gets plus 1, plus 1, as long as you control a swamp. So this is their, their 
kind of mixing up a little bit. They're kind of trying to mix the colours in so that you're playing off each other. We've seen Mountain already. Uh, white had a blue, uh, a blue effect creature. If you've got a an island in there, um, so this is mixing up the blue and the black, and it has ability of one colourless, one black. Target creature gains life link until end of turn. Really useful. So one three. So you're going in as a blocker. Um, if you've got a swamp in play, then it's a two four. We like two fours for a three mana drop. That's that's efficient. And then you've got this extra ability to give life link. Yeah. I like Herd Ape, so I like these creatures being in it. Cool. Yeah, I can live with that card. So, next up, Capture Kite Fins. This is six mana, four and two blue. Creature Fish, three three, flying. Whenever Capture Kite Fins or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Its ability is good. It has flying, which is good. It's a 3-3, three, three, which is a good body. It costs 6, which is not so good. I mean, the fact that it, it's not just itself, it's when you play other creatures after that, they also tap down stuff, is good. But you have to wait quite a long time to play it, and it doesn't have flash, which is a real shame. If it had flash, I'd or play convoke. it. Or convoke, yeah, make it cheaper. could be quite good. As it sits... I don't, I, I'm just I'm not there I can see it in the squid deck because you're making these squids you're making your token generation you're then because it's when it when a creature enters the battlefield under your control so you create your token that means you get to tap, get to tap down another creature yeah um, if, you, if you're doing a lot of that if you've got a lot of creatures coming out then maybe it could be worth going in for the six but I do feel that's that's a high cost for something that I think maybe a five or a convoke yeah in there could have could have done better. There's a reason why it's not a rare. Yeah, definitely. So next up, we have a card that I'm not going to be able to pronounce properly. Mohammed Dingy, which is a six drop double blue creature dingy uh, with flying. Uh, five, six. For a six drop with flying, I think this is a bomb. Yeah, I mean, um, as I understand it, Mahamoti Jin. Jin, sorry. Uh, Jin, that's the one. Sorry. Has been in Magic, like Sarah Angel, forever. It is an old-style card. It was really powerful back in the day. They brought it back for a bit of flair, a bit of fun for the new set. Six mana for a 5-6 with flying is not bad, quite efficient. It's got no abilities, which is a shame. It takes up one of the rare slots, which is not great. However, in Limited, he's good. Yeah. He's really good in Limited. Yeah, that's your bomb right there for, for splashing down. You got your... You play him, and then people are either going to have to answer it or fold. 5-6 flyer. That is four turns of just him on his own. And you, you, you've won. Yeah. You're good. Next up, we have Master of Predicaments. This is a five-mana creature. Sphinx, 4-4, four, four, flying. Whenever Master of Predicaments deals combat damage to a player, choose a card in your hand. That player guesses whether the card's converted mana cost is greater than four. If the player guessed wrong, you may cast the card without paying its mana cost. I already really like this guy. Now it's 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four with flying. In limited, that's great. Even in constructed, that's not bad. Its other ability is really fun. Really fun and plays off the Sphinx's thing and its own name. So, get your opponent to guess. And you can cast uh, a spell for free if they guess wrong. Fun. Really cool card. I really like him. And there's no negative effect for them guessing right either. No. Except you would probably... You'd need to reveal it. I think. I don't know. That would that would come down to who you're playing with, I think. Because it doesn't say you have to reveal nope, it. No, you don't have to reveal it at all. You just... But maybe they would... Yeah. Yeah, you just say, right, I'm going to get that card. Guess the card I'm thinking. I think... Yeah, I think, I think you're right. What you have to do is you have to, like, say, separate it. So, like, if you've got a, a hand of four... Move it to the side. Don't show what it is, but just go over this card here, just so that they yeah. know you're not going, is the card I'm thinking of four or greater? And you actually go, aha, no, it's this one. Yeah. That. This is gamesmanship. Just being polite to your opponent. Yeah. You just pick one card and you go, ha ha. Yeah. No, I like it. I think I think it could be fairer if you have to reveal it when they've guessed, so that your opponent knows what cards you've got in your hand. Yeah. But that without that, I think that that's an OP card. 
Yeah, it's a very good card, and I can't wait to see that played, even if it's played against me. Right, next up we have Mercurial Pretender, which is a 5-drop blue shapeshifter with 0-0. Zero, zero. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control, except it gains 2 colourless double blue, return this creature to its owner's hand. That's nice. That is very nice. So, you get a copy of whatever you've played already for 5 mana. That could be really interesting anyway. And then you throw it in as a chunk blocker. When it gets to to damage stage and resolution, you then pay four mana and you get that card back. And then next turn you can play it as a completely different card that you already control on the battlefield. A lot of fun in that card. I can see it being quite fun as a five mana Mahamoti Jin. Yeah. Two of them on the battlefield. And also, of course, with blue, don't forget you've got a lot of things in there that can steal opponent's cards. Yeah. So you could mind control something like that if there is a mind control in here. We haven't got that far yet. Um, an opponent's card. And then make one of your opponent's cards. That means you've not paid any mana at all for two fatties and you've really upset your opponent. Yeah. Which is always fun. Cool. So next up we have Military Intelligence. This is a two mana blue enchantment. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. That's nice. I like that. If you've got some low mana cost efficient creatures that you can keep attacking with early in the game, say some low mana cost flyers in particular, really good. Drawing cards. Drawing cards is always good. Always good. It gets you through your deck quicker. You get to find your threats faster. Good card. I like it. Just be aware, pre-release, you're a 40 card deck. If you're drawing a lot of cards quickly, if your opponent plays any mill, which we haven't seen any mill yet, not yet. No. But if your opponent does play some kind of mill, you could self-mill. So just be aware of that situation there. But very nice, especially when you've got cards that trigger off drawings yeah. and things like that. All right, we are on to the next page for blue. So we haven't got many left here. So the first one is Mind Sculpt, which is a two-drop blue sorcery. Target opponent puts the top seven cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. There's your mill right there. Seven cards milling for two mana for a common. I mean, this is a, a mainstay of magic. I've seen this one. This has come in and out for years, and it's a really good card. You've got a play set of these. That's that's 28 cards off. They've drawn seven already, so that's 35. They've got five cards left in their, hand, left in their deck to draw. Yeah. It, it's a fun card. Two mana for seven. I say fun card. Fun for you, not so fun for your opponent. Two mana for seven cards. It's very difficult to find an ability that efficient. Yeah, that's a really nice card, especially for a common. Here we have another mainstay, especially from the starting from the Lawman set of uh, Memory Serves. Negate. Two mana, instant, count the target, non-creature spell. Brilliant card. Uh, the only thing it doesn't hit, of course, is, is creatures. But it only costs you two mana. And you can count it anything else for two. Your opponent wants to kill a creature, two mana? No. Your opponent wants to kill all your creatures, two mana? No. Good card. I'm a fan of the game. Does, uh, just a quick ruling, Planeswalkers, do they count as creatures? Nope. So negate hits Planeswalkers. There we go. Lovely. Right. Next up, Nimbus of the Isles, which is a five drop blue creature elemental for a 3 3 with flying. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I know I like flying, but for a 5-drop, for a 3-3 three, three with flying, I... Yeah, no, that's really expensive there. Um, maybe if you're desperate for some kind of flying, you were going to yeah. do it, but not at 5 mana cost. No, you'd hope he did something else for that much mana, but it's okay padding, I guess. 